Christmas every day. I hate the giving of the hand unless the whole man accompanies it. This Christmas, remember that the true value of a gift depends on how you measure it. Sure, a gift with a large price tag might seem more valuable, but only by the world's standards. As usual, God looks at it differently. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live in on. If you are feeling like you have nothing left to give right now, that verse is worth pondering. She gave more, she gave out of her poverty, she put in all she had to live on. Think about this a little bit. It puts a whole new twist on Christmas when we consider this passage in light of who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. Mary carried Jesus for nine months in order to deliver him to the world. We carry Jesus for the rest of our lives in order to deliver him to the world. As living sacrifices, we take him to mankind so that Christ might literally touch people through our hands, feet, and voices. When we allow Christ to live through us in this way, we are sharing our very life, everything we have more than anything that can be bought. Have you ever realized it? Have you ever though, thought about this? God basically asks us to do the same thing he asked Mary to do. He came to Mary, someone who had nothing to give, and he basically said, make your body a living sacrifice to me and trust yourself to me. Now he looks at us and says exactly the same thing. Lord, one more time, I willingly and joyfully lay myself at your feet to be used as the packaging and wrapping of your gift of Jesus to the world every day, all year long. In the midst of all the holiday noise, give me ears to hear the gentle voice of your spirit nudging me toward tangible acts of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God with you this season. Once again, we come to the holiday season, a deeply religious time that each of us observes in his own way by going to the smell of his choice. Learning who we are in Christ is a lifelong process. And class doesn't dismiss over the holidays. In fact, there are facts to the biblical account of Christmas that bring the reality of being in Christ to light, to light like nothing else. Consider the popular Yuletid word, Emmanuel, Hebrew for God with us. It shows us prophetically in Isaiah 7, part 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will convince and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Fast forward about 700 years to a young girl who is growing up minding her own business. An angel inter inter interrupts her placid life in Luke 1 part 26. 
In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to, the, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. The miracle, of course, is not just that the Lord was with Mary. He was in Mary. The Spirit of God per permitted the membranes of human flesh so that the Son of God could devil in the womb of a woman. A familiar story but an astounding reality. Another astounding reality much closer to home is this. If you have come to grips with your sin, thank God for his forgiveness through the cross and open the door of your heart to Christ. The same is true of you as was true of Mary. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. The miracle, of course, is that the Spirit of God has somehow permitted the membranes of your flesh so that He isn't just with you, but He is in you too. Your own Christmas story. Oh Jesus, this year fill my mind not only with the awe and wonder of what you did 2000 years ago, but fill my heart with worship for what you did the day I asked you into my life, the day you became Emmanuel, God with me, God in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God with you in this moment. This is the message of Christmas. We are never alone. Christmas songs tells us this this is the hap happiest time of the year with much mistelo mistel twigging and hearts that are glowing when loved ones or near psychologists on the other hand tell us that is also the lone loneliest time of the year with many hearts hurting and souls that are hearing alone and in fear yeah it can be a hard season but God speaks into the lonely void with a promise the same promise he gave Mary nine months before the first Christmas the virgin's name was Mary and the angel went to her and said greetings you who are highly favored the Lord is with you hallelujah the Lord is with you. This is a direct quote from another angelic visit to Gideon during a horrible time for the Israelis. They were trying to make an honest living, but every time they plant crops, the Meditian and Amalekites attacked like swarms of locusts. They were living on a playground surrounded by bullies, and God didn't seem to be doing anything about it, but He was. God was unfolding a plan that came with a promise. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you mighty warrior. Our challenges are very different than Mary and Gideon's, but the message of Christmas, the truth about Emmanuel, is the same promise that holds true of us today. We are never alone. You see, what God promises is 
his presence and when we receive the presence of God he takes us from having nothing to having everything that we need hallelujah Lord I praise you for this promise of your presence right here right now in the midst of the holiday chaos I ask that you call my heart with the true peace that comes only through Emmanuel you with me in this moment amen hallelujah amen the reality of Emmanuel how many observe Christ's birthday how few his precepts I have to be honest I really do love the holiday called Christmas churches are a beehive of activity homes are a menagerie of laughter and friends and family I love the food, I love the decorations, I love the way Christmas smells and who can argue with a couple of cool presents under the tree with my name on it. Not a bad way to observe someone's birthday. Yes, the holiday works for me. If I say mindful of the core precepts behind its ob uh, observance, and if I am willing to put the precept into practice, in that sense, Christmas is really just another day. It's one more special day to revel in the wonderful mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. The fact is God is with us and the command given to Joshua is the command to us as well. Have I not recommended you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So yeah, I am looking forward to the holiday. It's another day to release my battles and my fears and my self-righteousness. It's just another day to embrace the incredible love of God and celebrate the reality of His presence in my life. Yes, Emmanuel, God is with us. That truth makes every day a celebration. Jesus, thank you for this holiday. I praise you for one more day to experience the promise of your presence. Because you are in me, I trust you to be strong. I trust you to be my courage. Thank you that you are with me wherever I go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As you ponder this Christmas, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in, God in the beginning. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As you ponder the significance of Christmas, think about how Christ's entry into the world was orchestrated. Even from his earliest moments, Jesus identified with the hardship of people living in the stressful circumstances and surrounded by misunderstanding. First, Jesus' mother was pregnant before she should have been. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Jesus' birth was scandalous and it set his family at odds with their community. Second, Jesus and his parents were essentially homeless. There was no room for them in the inn. Jesus was born in a stable because his parents had no place to stay. 
Third, Jesus and his parents were refugees in another country. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Soon after Jesus' birth, the murderous King Herod forced May and Jesus, uh, Joseph to flee for their lives to Egypt. Jesus could easily have chosen to be born in circumstances more fitting for a king, but he didn't. He came to identify with ordinary people. So, as you journey to that long ago manger to meet the Christ child, may you see more clearly the loving God who meets his people in their deepest struggles. He is Emmanuel. He is Jesus, the most precious gift we could ever receive. Merry Christmas. Amen. The real spirit of Christmas, maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. Doctor says, how how the Grinch stole Christmas. For hundreds of years, the world has been in a culture war for passion, possession of Christmas Day. It's worth nothing that December 25 was originally an ancient pagan holiday in northern Scandinavia. The sun completely disappeared during those winter months and they thought that if they threw a really, really good party, the sun would be in, uh, inclined to return in the spring of thousands of years. For thousands of years, it seemed to work pretty well, so we kept it up. The truth is we really don't know the date of Christ's birth, yet atheists, Christians, humanists, and politicians all seem to find new things to fight over every year about who owns this day and the only one who really seem to be winning are the big box retailers maybe all the bickering is misguided I think my dad puts things in an interesting perspective. The spirit of Christmas needs to be suppressed by the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christmas is annual. The spirit of Christ is eternal. The spirit of Christmas is sentimental. The spirit of Christ is supernatural. The spirit of Christmas is a human product. The spirit of Christ is a divine person that makes all the difference in the world. As important as Christmas, it is many of us as a holiday shouldn't it pale in uh, comparison to who Christ is in us every day. <laughs> Father, give me the wisdom to choose my battles wisely. Above all things, may the eternal, supernatural, divine spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, overwhelmingly uh, supersede the annual, sentimental, human spirit of Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. To the American people, Christmas is not a time or a season, but a state of mind. They cherish peace of goodwill. To be plenteous in mercy is to have the real spirit of Christmas. If we think on these things, there will be born in us a Savior, and over us will shine a star sending its gleam of hope to the world. Christmas story begins with a message from the angel Gabriel 
to a young girl with nothing to give except her faith in the promise of hope of Emmanuel, God with us. Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Not only was the Lord with her, but the Lord was in her. For nine months she held him in her womb, then fed him, clothed him, and held him by the hand as he began to walk alone and fulfill the destiny given to him by his father. Thirty-three years later, she had to say goodbye to him twice. The first time she knelt beneath his feet on soil saturated uh, with the blood that he was shedding for your sins and mine. The second time she watched as his glorified, resurrected body ascending into the sky, leaving her and us with a mission and with the same promise that Gabriel had proclaimed to her so many years before. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Jesus will be with you always. That's the beginning and the end of the story. The promise of his presence with and in those who open their hearts to him. Now go tell it on the mountain. My beloved Jesus, Deep in my soul today, I thank you for your incredible promise to be with me and in me today and to the end of the age. Thank you for the tears and sweat and blood that you shed to bring us to this incredible celebration of what you have done and are doing through us set my heart free to worship you for these indescribable gifts and use me in any way you choose to share this love with others amen hallelujah amen names mean something and he shall be called Names mean something in biblical times. The name attached to a child would many times be a prophetic hope spoken over that baby. This was literally true when one of God's great prophets predicted the birth of Jesus. Hundreds of years before it took place, he called him Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Each of these names speaks into the character of the one we call Savior. A week for you to think, the past isn't what it used to be. Congratulations, be the mere fact that you are reading this devotional today. You have ups, uh, obviously negotiated your way through the holiday season without dying. No, you didn't eat so much that you actually exploded. No, none of your immediate relatives actually injured each other by being in the same room too long. The wrapping is crammed in the cardboard boxes on the carb and tree needless and are be uh, beginning to fall to the carpet. Now, all you have to do is figure out how to pay for it all. So, it's time to go back to work or at least pretend to go back to work. I am not sure that any work really gets done to do, uh, during the week between Christmas and New Year's. So, what's this week good for? 
traditionally this is uh, the week that we look back at the past year and then look ahead into the next year making bold resolutions about what the next 365 days will be like we also try to vain to remember the resolutions that we made last year Anybody need a, a very slightly used thread, thread mill? I know where you can find one cheap. I am all for resolution if it takes place in the biblical context of who we are in Christ and who God is. Let's start with an over, overacting a truth that puts everything in perspective now listen you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city spend a year there carry on business and make money why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say if it is lord's will we will live and do this or that that's wonderful sobering stuff read it again if you would think about it pray about it let it soak in it's the perspective that keeps our hearts and our resolutions on track lord of life my days are truly in your hands every breath and every heartbeat is a gift from you open my mind to your word open my heart to your voice humble me lord i will live only if it is your will i will do this or that only if it is your will hallelujah amen amen